Hey, you there. Thank you for watching, and welcome to Forge Alliance Forever. Today, I have a 5v5 custom match on the Necroxis map generator here, so let's go ahead and introduce our players, starting with Team 1 up here in the Northeast, and ending with Team 2 down here in the Southwest. We'll start with the first player on Team 1 of Kaizoku, going first land as a Seraphim in Pac-Man Yellow. To the North of Man, we have BJ going first land in Wario Blue as a UEF. In Imperial Gray, we have C2118 Freedom. He's going Cybern first land. In the rear guard air slot, most, yeah, it looks like most likely we have Carl 17 OSPT. We're going to call him Carl for today. He's going first land in Royal Blue, sorry, Royal Purple as a Seraphim. And last but not least, for Team 1, we have Cajero going first land in Emerald Green as a uef so on team one side of things we're going to be calling the green team we have two uef two seraphim and one cybran no aeon tech on the northeast side of the map let's start here with team two with the batman great player of ayahuasca dest going first land as a uef to his north we have Ma X Mac X, or we'll just call him Mac in Barbie Pink as a si as a Cerebrin going first land, most likely second air. To his north we have High Fi, High Five, going first land in Chevy Crimson as an Aeon, and next to him in Aqua Blue we have Big Bang or Tropical Blue. Again, still haven't determined which one I like more. I like both. It's hard to choose. Choices are hard, folks. Going first land as a Cybran, and last but not least, in Snow White, we have Lord Rato going first land as a Seraphim. And that is the players on Team 2, and their racial compositions are, let's see, two Cybran, an Aeon, an UEF, and a Seraphim. So all of the races represented, or the factions, I guess, not to say races, all of the factions represented here in the southwest section of the map. Let's take a look here at Reclaim at 7,810. Probably was like 8,000. There's probably something you can see. There's, you know, uh, Reclaim fairly close to the main bases. So most likely 8,000 even. We are having comms on Team 2 actually go forward quite early compared to what Team 1 is doing. We have three, well, we have three players on Team 1 moving to the front lines. But Team 2, we have all five players are leaving their main bases. They're like, nah, the engineers got it. We'll take care of it. They'll take care of it. And they're going to start with some forward positions. They're going to start going for this kind of outer ring here. And then they're going to probably move in further. On Team 1 side of things, kind of similar thing happening, but a little bit slower. So Team 2 will have the advantage in and that sort of they started earlier, so they're you know faster on the draw kind of thing. So we'll see how that plays out. This map, there's you know eight thousand reclaim, not a whole lot divvied up between you know ten players. It's like eight hundred a person if you make it even, which is not going to be, but it's not a whole lot honestly. We are having some you know groups of mexes kind of dotted around, but we only have like one tight group of uh, non core mexes on either side of the map everything else is kind of spread this one's kind of close but i mean this one is like super close you could probably put one factory in between all these and that's about it about as much as you can fit probably just a shield and some pd and call it good 2v2 says mac oh saying to to uh, ayahuasca that two of those are his and two of those are um so it's two of those are max and two of those are ayahuasca's which would probably make sense He's like, hey, I want some of those. Don't no hog them all for yourself. Early bomber out here from the player of a BJ. He's going to go for a mechs kill or engineer kills. Let's see. He's going to go for, I think it's engineer kills. Bombs are dropping and they miss the targets. The engineers are safe. One of them gets singed a little bit, but not too much. Going to go out to the west a little bit to make a turn around and those engineers will get taken out unfortunately for high fi five i'm gonna say high five i want to say high five but high five he's going for gun speed at the current moment and that bomber is still online now going for the main base of ayahuasca let's see where he ends up dropping his bombs i mean a good point would be right here another three engineers that's what he's going for 
And they get taken out. Ooh, that's got to hurt. Now, obviously not a lot of eco damage because it's a T1 bomber. But, you know, engineers, it does take time to rebuild those and all that. So it, it is annoying. We are starting to see some units cross that center. Uh, cut in the land. I think it's... Sometimes it's really easy to tell where the cut is. I think last uh, video was the same thing. It's like really, I think it's, I think it's straight down the horizontal axis. I think the x-axis looks about right. I think, yeah, I think it's right down the middle. Oh, it could be. Mm, it's hard to tell. Anyway, T2 going on the way for Lord Rato, going for you know more tankiness. He is a uh, Seraphim, so he will have the Uthashalas. Second best PD, in my opinion. First best being Tridents, of course. But, uh, you know, I try not to be a too too much uh, biased. I, I am a fan of the UEF faction and their units and structures and whatnot. Except their shields. The, the Seraphim, I will concede that the Seraphim are the best. Because they just are, factually. To the east, we have some Intel installations. And they are staggered. So, layers of Intel. Very good from Kaizoku. If that's how I say that name right. And again, if I don't say anybody's name right, please let me know down in the comments. I, uh, you know, I have release a video every single day, so if I say somebody's name, if I cast them again, I don't want to keep saying their name wrong and look like a fool. But uh, we are having representation from the BRS clan, so if you are a fan of the of them, the here is a cast for you. Let's see the highest and rated, lowest rated players in the game. Well, lowest are tied between High Five and BJ, and the highest rate, the, sorry, lowest rated, and the highest rated being Big Bang at 1800. Shortly falling behind there, not shortly falling behind, but shortly, you know, catching up in ranking, we have C2118 Freedom. So it's a pretty well balanced game. 94% is actually a little bit better than normal. So again, good to see, you know, our players are trying to balance it as best as possible but it looks like team one will take the northern section and team two will take the southern section which again reinforces the theory that it's a horizontal cut not really like a vertical or diagonal cut in terms of the uh the mirroring that happens but we are having a small army on here to the east attacking the player of a mac he's gonna be shooting out some of these uh dams Plus there is some Zooey, and they go, no, you're not building a PD. No. No soup for you. No. We are having a you know a hug session going down between BJ and Kaizuko. They're just kind of hanging out on this little cliffside here. Just like, yeah, just like buddies, just you know watching each other's back. Pretty uh, good camaraderie going down over there. Gun speed and range going down for Carl in the northwest section. And there, I mean... This game kind of has four lanes like the last video did. It's kind of a lot less visible. You have bot lane, top lane, mid lane, and you know Midwest and Middle East. It's just kind of hard because the only dividing factor between the mid lane, the sub subdivisions of the mid lane is this little hole in the middle. But that's really about it. We're having a combined push out here from the West for Carl and for Cajero. And I don't think it's going to make that much of a dent. There is an uh, Utoshala and T1 PD spammed up here for Lord Rato. This will take out some incoming forces, and then the rest of them will be taken out by that comm of Big Bang. Big Bang is getting a lot of value out of his comm, starting to get that veterancy up and running, of course. Trying to survive more and more hits. But the comm of High Five has moved considerably farther up than he was a couple minutes ago when he was attacked over here in the south. And a lot of his units are going to move in probably around the east side and probably trying to go around this little mountainside like here. That would be my move, trying to force the units away from the middle and maybe, you know, kind of group up with the forces down here in the south from uh, Ayahuasca. But Ayahuasca, kind of in a bad way, Freedom is pushing heavily in the southern portion of the map. And the comms are just going to face one another. Looks like uh, getting some reclaim here for freedom and then probably gonna make another pd most likely i don't know i don't know what he's he's doing down there there's one engineer here from bj and i don't know why it's down there but it just is so why not but again that push out here from the west from carl and from Cajero is starting to make a dent in team two's infrastructure and uh 
you know, outlying forces and structures. There is a intel installation that goes down. But Lord Rato does have more units coming in all the time and a decent amount of them as well. This will probably head off most of this incoming force. They want to have a wide berth around this little fire base set up around this uh, little hill mountain thingamajig. Not even a mountain, not even a hill. It's like a deformed mountain pretty much. But I love the placement here because he pretty much covers both sides but focuses on the west side ensuring that he pushes Team 1's forces further to the west to ensure they don't have a lot of wiggle room when they try to retreat. But Freedom has now pushed forward even more and is causing Ayahuasca to retreat. I don't know about this. We are having the calm of Mac moving into support. This looks like it's going to be a two to one situation here fairly shortly. Not looking good for Freedom. If he pushes any further, it's not going to go well, especially with the forces that hit from high five. So it's going to be a three to one, not counting the calm. That's not going to go good for Freedom, and Freedom does not... I mean, he's starting to notice it, but uh, will it be too late is the question. Again, that push out here to the west, not really doing a whole lot, but we are having a sub-push, a secondary push out here through the middle. I don't know if it's going to get a whole lot of work done. Engineers will go down, a couple of tanks go down, some uh, Aurora will probably go down, but not really a whole lot of lasting damage. And Freedom does notice the incoming forces from Mac and from High Five. And High Five is actually cutting off the retreat here for Freedom. And this is going to cause Freedom to be like, well, now what do I do? And uh, my guess would be just retreat with everything. You lose this front position, but you're going to survive. Going you know, this way, you're going to run into more forces. So just running straight back is the way to go. You'll get more veterancy as you go. He does have the gun upgrade on his comms. So he'll be able to do more and more damage and be able to run while you can. <laughs> oh, that's just, that's just me, Ayahuasca, <laughs> in, like, run. Uh, and I have the, the song from Run in my head. But we have a calm death to the northwest out here for High Five. Looks like he was distracted with his forces over here. And Kaiz Kaizuka came in and took him out, dropping this game to a 5v4 in Team 1's favor. Apologies for missing that. We're focusing on this fight here. Freedom is falling into the yellow. And we have even more forces from Team 2 from Big Bang. So this was pretty much like a 3v, 4v1 attack. And Freedom will go down. He's being stuck by his own Mantis, it looked like. And that is a kill for Team 2. Dropping this to a 4v4. It is all tied up now. Getting revenge for their fallen comrade. But in terms of who they lost, Team 1 lost their highest rated player and Team 2 lost their lowest rated player. So in terms of trades, that's really good. It says 3v1 and I'm air slot. <laughs> Where's our land? Like, well, I'm going to try here. It's not over here, though. But uh, the structures and forces from Freedom will go over to Kahero and Pi-5 will give his over to a Big Bang. Well, they won't be given to. They'll just be award awarded, transferred over. High five doesn't have a choice. I guess he could before he died, but that's kind of a lot of micro to deal with before you die. So over here to the west, a large grouping of forces. We are seeing some T2 PD and, of course, a radar installation ensuring that they know where everything is. And a decent radius. You can see the, the radius of this Intel installation, you know, almost to the main base of Team 2, or at least for... Uh, Lord Rato. So again, a huge area just for T2. Now imagine T3. It's even more effective. Looks like that power vacuum that has occurred due to the death of Freedom will be scooped up by Ayahuasca and that'll be a nice hold for him in the south. Not a lot of mexes, but at least territory-wise he'll have that uh, eastern slot taken care of. Or eastern approach, not eastern slot. Yeah, eastern approach. But again, army pushback a little bit, but they're going to Hold around this bank of triads and a couple of missiles that are being spammed up by Kahedo as well. I wonder what he's targeting. Not any calm. Well, there's a calm here. He's just hanging out. He, Lord Rato is going to build a little fire base here to the east side. So he has a forward one here, a further back one here. So layered, again, layered defense. Very effective. You want something to fall back to. Even if it's a couple PD, that's better than nothing. In this instance over here for Kaizuko, he has the forward base here and then nothing. And then his main base. So he has no defenses. He has no defenses on the eastern side, which once belonged to Freedom, which is now 
in in Cajero's hands. He should just give this over to Kaizuko so that way he can manage his eastern side a lot more effectively. But I guess he's not right now. Or at least give him some of the mexes. You know, something's better than nothing at this point. But there was a small little run by. I don't even really can call it a run by, but just movement of units out here from Big Bang. I guess it's a distractionary force. Yep, that's probably what it is. To draw the units out of position and then bring his main force in. We also have the main force here from Lodorato as well. But there are Pini and mm, some of them are in range. Yep, some of those units just come in range and start being assaulted. There are some Yenzin, these hover tanks out here for Lord Ratho. I wonder why he's not going for Ilshis. That's kind of weird. You don't need to hover on a la an entire land map. There's not even water anywhere. No water. So uh, no chance for Navy on this map for those who hate Navy. But Shield, this firebase is looking really good. He has TMD, he has TML, he has PD, he has some uh, flak as well. So very effective base here for him. We have one T2 mobile, I was going to say RD, but mobile missile launcher here. The Yathisha? Yathisha? Hmm. Again, Seraphim names are weird, so the fact that I can get some of them right is definitely a, <laughs> a victory for me. We have some bombers out here taking out, I don't know what they're going for, but I guess mech, uh, engineers. They're going to fly over engineers and miss them, so I guess not going after mexes maybe. But uh, there was a small force out here from BJ that was summarily dealt with. Didn't really last very long. T3 air has been achieved for both players. Actually, no, excuse me, it has not been achieved for both teams. Oh, it has, but it's a little bit behind the curve. Cajero is building it now, but... Uh, Big Bang does already have a decent air force at his disposal. And that main T2, T1, T2 land fight has begun. Both of those forces here for Team 2 have grouped up. Would have liked to see transfer of control given to either one just to, you know, ease the micro. But uh, I guess, no, they're not going to push. No? Okay. Well, we were going to see something, and then it didn't happen. So very disappointing. Let's check on the east side. Uh, there's a couple of forces on here from Ayahuasca taking out some uh, factories, but not really a whole lot. His main force is pushing forward, though, and he's going for T3 on his comm. So he's going to start building some more defenses for, you know, very farther forward. He is UEF, so he does get those Ravagers, so they're very deadly against uh, well, most units. Not really T1. It's kind of hard to hit a lot of T1 units with Ravagers. Those are more like... Uh, with the Shalas or Cerberus type of uh, units to take out. But we are having some T1 being, uh, sorry, T1 already taking out some forces out here from Big Bang. Just like, ah, oh, why not? We'll just hang out here. But T1 has claimed the middle, or at least most of the middle. The middle is kind of relative at this point because it's you know kind of a huge section of the map. Really, again, a note definitive lanes makes it very hard to cast sometimes because you're like, oh, they're down the pot lane. Now they're down the, the top lane. But it's like mid's kind of just meh, just everywhere. Even the calm of Big Bang is going to probably come forward and help establish this fire base up here to the northwest for him. Wouldn't like to see another fire base built up here for Lord Root as well just to ensure that he has some defenses for his forces here. Maybe start launching some missiles, launching some arty something. And we have a artillery installation here for BJ going after the... Wait, what is it going after? I don't know what it's going after, but that's kind of a really weird play. It's not protected. This was the only thing built here. And these uh, T1 arty will take it out. Didn't really cover it very well. And he's trying to build PD... But the Utashala is in range, and it won't matter. He needs a shield first and then the PD, not the other way around. Because by the time he builds it, it will lose. But the PD does open fire. Will it be enough? Well, let's see. It's a couple more shots. It does have one rank of veterans. He takes out the first PD and doesn't really do a whole lot. The second one will finish here fairly shortly. That push here to the west, not happening. T3 going on the way. For Cajero, going to build Ravagers, and that's going to open up this western side for Team 1. We have Kaizuko just kind of hanging out under some shields. 
is a huge opening on the eastern side that Team 2 is not exploiting. There is a roaming band of units from Kaizuko as well, but again, there's a huge amount of land that Team 2 could go after. Well, specifically Ayahuasca, but uh, he's deciding not to as of right now. Is he building something in his main base that we just don't know about? No. I mean, it's almost 20 minutes. Two people have died. That rule of 20 minutes is the uh, standard here. At least one. At least one person dies before 20 minutes. That's usually what happens. But T1 bombers over the top, softening up some T1 units. Don't know if this is going to amount to anything. There's three Utashalas plus a shield plus T1 PD. So, again, not really a whole lot of uh, room for error. But these uh, triads were able to take out this Utashala, but there's now another one back here. And, again, that just goes to show the uh, benefit of layered defense. You just got to keep building and building. It's kind of like an onion. You have to go through all of the different layers. And sometimes it just, you know, takes a long time. And sometimes you can just cut right through it like a scaffold just boop and you're done but uh you gotta have layered defenses because even here we have you know somewhat of a defense here for carl he has a more defenses back here defenses being the com and a t2 factory so i don't even think he does he have well, he has a couple pd so you know he has something and he has a utashala as well so you gotta have layered defenses e again even if it's a couple pd just something to fall back to and we even have the com of Ka 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 Kaizuko moving back. Is he going back to his main base? Yes, he is. And he is building some T3 power. Than sorry, Thams. Othams. I don't know why I want to call Othams Thams. I don't, I don't know why. But uh, Othams are appearing here for him. We have missiles being launched at those uh, Utashalas. Again, mobile missile launchers, not as powerful, but they don't cost anything to rebuild the missiles. So build the unit and then it's, that's it but we have some bombers down here to the east here for the ayahuasca and ayahuasca getting a decent amount of uh, work done taking out half of the hit points on that uh, max engineers could be targeted next oh maybe he sees them nope going after mexes okay no oh some of those uh, engineers get uh, singed there and we have some interceptors here from carl we have to the west apologies for missing it but big bang goes down by cajero I think it was actually a snipe, it looks like. Let's see if we can get... Uh, now, all these are loaded. That's not it. Hmm. It's kind of weird. There's no forces nearby. There's no... And there's a couple of harbingers, but those were his. I don't... The missiles are fully loaded. They couldn't have loaded them that fast. So, uh, maybe that was a control K? That's kind of weird, though. Let me know down in the comments if anybody caught that. Because, I mean, it's... Uh, Kahedo got the kill. But, I mean, it had to have been missiles. That's the only thing that makes sense. There's no other units nearby. There's this. But that uh, looks like it was one of, you know, uh, Big Bang's units. But, again, the missiles are, you know, already loaded. They wouldn't have loaded that fast. So, and none of them have any veteran seat. Well... Well, this one has a little bit. You would have got a lot more veteran for that kill. So it wasn't missiles. So it must have been a control K. Oh, that's weird. But anyway, this now, the departure of the highest rated player in the game on Team 2 specifically drops us to a 4v2, 4v3 in Team 1's favor. And now we have momentum being built here for Team 1. They're going to push this fire base that was kind of causing some headaches here for BJ. Forces from Carl are making the approach. And then now the response here from teammates here to the west from Kahero are going to push in. Forces here from Lord Rato are moving into the east. And looks like Kahero notices it and then goes, no, nope, not engaging. Goes over on the west. Very good tactical move there. Saw where his opponent was going and then went the other direction. That's will force these units back. Valuable time lost. This uh, Omni will go down. That's got to hurt. I have to rebuild that here pretty soon. And then some of those forces leave, and then they do another fade back around. Now we're having Autumn Siege tanks making their presence known here in the middle to the east. Well, I mean, we have more Autumns, but Ayahuasca has built some uh, Ravagers, and those aren't going to last very long. So that, that, that main push took out the firebase, and that was really it. And we're having some T1 units secure the reclaim field. BJ should come in here with these engineers and build up some, uh, maybe a T, a couple T1 factories and then go for 
a bunch of reclaim. In terms of Eco, which we haven't even talked about, and it's already 24 minutes. Total mass, total mass accrued for both teams, 535,000 mass versus 411,000. That's over 100,000 mass at 24 minutes. That's a lot of mass to be up, especially up almost 300 mass a second. Again, the reclaim numbers are kind of hard to keep. Let's just average it out to 300 mass per second more for Team 1 versus Team 2. Well, no wonder they're up more than 100,000 mass. That's, that's a lot of mass to be down. And... Yeah, there are mexes in the middle that have fallen for Team 2, but they should be roughly at the same amount in terms of, you know, generated. I don't see why they are falling behind so much. I mean, Team 1, th I mean, no one's building Rascoms yet because that's not what you do yet. At least not this early. Yeah, I don't see. I mean, a lot of them are, most of them are T3 for Team 1, so maybe, but... I mean, Team 2 have dealt a blow to the east in terms of some mass uh, extractors. So, and there's even a missile while we speak on its way to take out one. So that'll drop Kaheros down by 6, right? Yeah, 6. I'm thinking it's 9, but it's 6 for the non-ringed T2 mexes. But uh, we have some Gunth sorry, Gunthers, clink hammers being used to take out the shield. Ayahuasca builds the first experimental. It's probably the fat boy, considering he is UEF, but I could be wrong. No, it is Cybern. He was gifted over some Cybern tech, and that is going to be very useful for probably breaking the center position. There are some Othams, which I hear more Othams firing somewhere. Did I miss something? No, okay. We have some Othams firing in the distance somewhere, but we have a... <laughs> what, what, what is this? I want, what are you doing, Ayahuasca? What's all these wall sections for? Is this like some form of uh, Morse code in like wall sections? I don't, I don't get the jaggediness. I know you're trying to like break up pathing, but it's just very weird. Almost looks like it's a preset too. It's like da -da 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 -da. yeah, it does look like a preset. Look at that. Huh. Anyway, I don't know what that's about. Let me know down in the comments if you know what that's about, because I don't. Trying to spell something out. We're playing Je not Jeopardy. We're playing uh, Wheel of Fortune or something. We gotta like you know E and then all the E show up or whatever. Anyway, yeah, it's just weird. Push, trying to some of it. It, it, it looks like Kaizuko doesn't really want to commit. He kind of wants to commit, not really wants to commit. I mean, he is pretty far forward in Team 2's territory in terms of, you know, the front line, which is, to be fair, the front line for Ayahuasca. But Ayahuasca building some wall sections. I don't know what he's doing over there, though. But some of those factories will go down. They are T1. Not really a whole lot. There's a lightning tank. Oh, if you saw... You haven't seen my last video about lightning tanks during the game. Oh, it's just go watch it. It was great. Zars were flown everywhere. It was great. It was a good match. Um, but lightning tanks pristine just amazing used excellent to take out hordes of gunships very effective and now we have a counter offensive to the west here from lord rata who's trying to push where his old firebase was there's some mobile missile launchers under threat some ilshis to protect them but we have some sniper bots and some awesome and shields on the way so better mix of units you don't really have any anti-air in this mix don't have any shields in your seraphim Sh for shame for shame where are your shields but the monkey was used how i thought it would be using it just gonna cut straight to the middle a large horde of lobos are on their way to team two's main front line and again he's doing it over here like i don't know what this is about it's so weird but that monkey lord is going to lead the charge. Get a lot of interesting off of these Othams. Going to get a rank and vet here. Yep, there it is. And it's going to cause a lot of these forces from Kaizuko to fall back. And the calm has already retreated. The Omni will fall. Well, that's going to hurt Team 1. There is a T2 over here. So that could be upgraded to T3 Omni here really shortly. And the calm of BJ looked like he was going to get sniped here. I thought I saw a missile. That's what they look like with missiles. See, yep, there were some uh, attack missiles in the back. So he saw that at the last second and moved. The Monkey Lord continuing to use its laser to push through the front lines of Team 1. 
Team 1 falling back. There are some sniper bots, but they're still in range of the secondary gun on that Monkey Lord. So they're able to get shot at. There are Ilshis as well trying to do their jobs. But another intel installation goes down. Another one will fall as well. So Team 2 losing a lot of their eyes on this eastern side. At least the Middle East side. But the Fat Boy 4, Team 1 on the western side, has pushed back a lot of the forces for Lord Ratto. We even have T2 already getting in the mix as well, taking out some mixes as well. But gunships have arrived for BJ. Again, the Lightning Tanks are nearby to help deal with any incoming air units to help uh, assist in those defenses. And you can, like, look, they take out, the ASF take out the uh, gunships pretty quickly, but then they get taken out by the Lightning Tanks. And even if you just have a couple of them, you can see the amount of damage that those Lightning Tanks do. And this Monkey Lord is still alive, surprisingly. I don't know why those gunships didn't just finish it. But they're going to cut across the east. I, I see what Ayahuasca is doing and trying to go around and try to delay the inevitable. But you have the sniper tanks in the back. And the range that they have on these things is pretty, lo pretty large. And so you got to just either you keep moving in a direction or they'll catch up and deal with the rest of your assisting forces. To the west, again, that fat boy is still here. We have some harbingers getting in close, but don't get that close with that few many harbingers. It's not going to go very well. And that monkey lord will kind of fall back, kind of won't. We have some shields now for ayahuasca. That's good. Put those next to the monkey lord. It is a three-star monkey lord. 85 hit points a second is really good, honestly. Now he's going to fall back and take out some... Why are there just T1 P gens just right here? That's weird. don't know why those are there, but okay. But those T1 forces are going to get hit by a bunch of chicken blasts, chicken plasma. They're going to take out some engineers, but that's not really the... Not really worth it, honestly. Like, oh, you killed a couple engineers. Eh. Large group of both spiders and Othams. Would like to see some shields in here, but at least they have lightning to help assist in anti-air uh, efforts. So again, good on them. We have some cougars in the mix here. Again, would have been useful with the Monkey Lord, but I think the Monkey Lord... Oh, it, oh, it's still alive. It's going northwest now. It's like doing some really weird, trying to avoid this army over here, which it did do actually a pretty good job of that, but um, now it's in enemy territory you know, severely. And so, I mean, it's going to take out Mexes, going to take out some Othams. The army out here from Kaizuko will fall back and go after the Monkey Lord once more. You know, we have some uh, hydrocarbons going down, some factories going down. But again, I, uh, Kaizuko just getting hit by a bunch of those, uh, you know, damaging Monkey Lord laser blasts. But the Fat Boy to the west will be taken out by doesn't say jesters, but they are Corsairs. One more bla uh, one more bombing run comes in and takes it out. Didn't really have the best positioning. It was running headfirst into a wall. Not really uh, good map awareness there, but uh, at least the mass can be claimed kind of easily, though, so not a total loss. Monkey Lord, not even contested. Where's that chicken? Well, the chicken is going south. Maybe? Where's it going? It's not even, it's not even going anywhere. That's frustrating. T1 bombers are on approach to help deal with this incoming monkey. Again, the fact that the monkey lord still hasn't been done with. There's a nuke built back there, and I think that's what the monkey lord is going for. Definitely would be... If he could grab that, that'd be worth the mass that he would dump. But the army out here from Kaizuko have somewhat caught up. The sniper bots are now in range. But will it be enough damage? Every shot that hits it... Deals, I think it's like 500. It's kind of hard to tell with all the numbers kind of flying around. It's about 500 damage, 300 damage. But that uh, that monkey lord is coming in close. The ravagers are being spammed up as we speak. This monkey lord should have probably died a couple of minutes ago. And this is going to be Team 1's big mistake here. Ravagers spammed up. They are targeting the nuke. The nuke gets taken out with the ravagers. Ooh, that's got to hurt. And that will definitely be a successful mission for that Monkey Lord. Definitely a uh, win for Team 2 as they're losing the western side. Did they even have any nuke defense? Well, let's see. No. No. Let's see. Oh, there's one right here next to a uh, disruptor. That Again, please don't put your TMD. Not TMD. Please don't put your SMDs next to your artillery. Not really the best place to put it. 
But yeah, there were no... Well, there was one. So Lord Rato would have been exposed. So, uh, And also uh, Ayahuasca is exposed. So yeah, that, that I'd say that was a win. It is 33 minutes. You should have SMD at this point, just as a fact. But a small attack force from Lord Rato has just skirted that whole northern side. Look at all the mexes that are taken out. They're finally being dealt with, but that's a lot of eco gone. And has now allowed Team 2 to catch up. They're not behind six, 300 mass per second. They're only down by like 1, 2 as of right now. The mass totals, though, however, heavily still in Team 1's favor, though. 300,000 in their favor. But the chicken will take out this fire base. There is an SMD here. I, I feel like that's very far forward. And it has a missile loaded. So that's fairly far forward for an SMD. But the comm of Cajero has retreated. I don't know if he'll make it out of there. There are a squadron or two of Corsairs on their way. Cajero's trying to dance. You can dodge some Corsair fire, but not all of it. You know, he should probably, if he is dead still, he would have died. But uh, Hex, Hex 5, <laughs> goodbye. Max says in chat, just taunting his opponent. But, yeah, that will be a kill here for Team 2. Once again, dropping this back to a tied game at 3v3. T1 bombers are on approach. Again, still don't know how uh, Big Bang that. It had to have been a Control K or something. It was just really weird. Just really weird. It, it could have been bombers or something, but there was no, there's no, uh, you know, dead planes or whatever, bombers or whatever. So I don't. It's just weird. Anyway, T1 bomber spam trying to take out the chicken. The chicken bot is, uh, you know, sub 50% hit points. More coming in all the time. The flat gun does do a decent amount for the T1 bombers, but the amount of squadrons here is just enough. We'll probably kill it off. There's a secondary chicken, so they'll take out one, but there'll be another one to replace it. And this is not going to feel good. Oh, the chicken actually... Oh, nope, the chicken actually makes it. So, uh, not a total loss here. It takes out a player and a firebase. Decent firebase, to be fair. And uh, keeps the chicken alive, so good on him. And Team 1 has to, you know, realign themselves with their goals once more they've lost another player so you know it kind of uh, takes a kind of minute or so to be like oh you know the not the delusion but the um like in movies where an explosion goes off they're d dis no d no not disorientation yeah disorientation i think it was during anyway but uh, disorientation be like well what's going on what, what what and so now the control of the east has been given over to Kaizuko, and it looks like Carl is going to handle the west side while BJ is going to handle the middle. So, again, easier di uh, the division of responsibilities here for Team 1. Good on uh, Carl giving over some of that eco to Kaizuko. But in the south, I mentioned earlier, the disruptor is actually almost done. Now it's in the green. This will be the first artillery, unless I missed one, in the main base of Team 1 somewhere. Oh, that's an SMD. Those are chickens. Air grid. Uh, factories. Nuke that. Just got cannibalized. There is a Novax in the back line. Again, please build shields. It bugs me when uh, players build, you know, experimental levels of, uh, you know, T4 units. Or not T4 units. Structures, whether that be, you know, the... Paragon, or the Alana Oz, or the Maver. Like, shields have to be priority number one, and they always will be. That and uh, teledefense and stuff like that, if you're facing off against the Cybern, which Team 2 is. They have, wait, yeah, they have Mac. I was going to say, don't they have two, but uh, they have one left. He's building the Disruptor as we speak. Standing next to it, you know, there's no artillery on the uh, Team 1 side of things, and they've, they've done their... Uh, Air scouts quite regularly, so they'll know a lot of what's going on in Team One's base. They'll even know of the Novax, which wasn't, you know, pinged or whatever, but uh, at least they know about it. Team Two, on the other hand, no, not a whole lot. The Omni's up, but that's about it. They don't really know a whole lot. You see some forces gather around a uh, structure. That's about it, and that could that could be an air grid. That could be, you know, mass platforms. They don't know what it is until you scout over it. So. Once the disruptor opens up, they're gonna know here really quick. But these Percy's, oh, it takes out four in one shot or three in one shot. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Ooh, 
two chickens and some sniper bots with some optums and of course a shield or two very effective would like to see a couple more shields just to help protect all the uh, sniper bots but uh, at least you know one's better than none so you know that's something at least and you can see the battle lines starting to be uh, kind of pushed back and redrawn as time goes on. They were up here for Team 1, and now they've been pushed back to here. Team 2 is starting to reclaim this western side. And uh, three chickens with some harbingers, some Othams, some sniper bots. Again, I don't see any anti-air. There are engineers taking the reclaim. Good on them. But, uh, yeah, no... Uh, no anti-air. That's definitely a misstep there. The chicken anti-air doesn't count. Sorry. No, it just doesn't count. But a horde, a horde of Corsairs are on their way for the chicken. They targeted the leftmost one. The hit points will drop into the yellow. Oh, no. And all those Corsairs get taken out by a bunch of Corsairs. Sorry, a bunch of Corsairs will be taken out by a bunch of lightning tanks. The effectiveness of those lightning tanks cannot be ignored. Very, like they're just eradicating everything. And the chicken course, uh, the chicken course, uh, the chicken anti air is not enough. Air fight goes over the top of those, and that will win air control for team one. And the disruptor is targeting. What is this? What are they targeting? They're targeting this fire base out here for uh, BJ and for Carl. I mean, they're building, he's building Rascoms here with a couple, you know, he has a couple of kennels, a bunch of sniper bots and, you know, anti-air and PD, maybe trying to soften up the defenses for his uh, partner over here to the west for Lord Rato and pushing in would be my guess, but uh, maybe he's going for the combo BJ directly. That would be uh, probably my guess. So let's see, this uh, shell will land, takes out all those kennels, takes out that... Uh, Shield and also, you know, it takes out a lot of the, of course, the uh, fat boy that's being built. That's gotta hurt. Shield comes back online. Teledefense says, uh, it says, uh, Kai, Kai Zuko, yeah, you're gonna need Teledefense at 40 minutes. Probably a good idea. Well, I mean, Mac does have an artillery and no one else does, so, you know, they are looking pretty here, but is that Novax finished? Yes, it is finished. That is good on uh, BJ getting that up and running. Now build like five more of them and uh, call it good. Actually, don't call it good. Just build 50 of them and call it good. Because hopefully by then you've either spent enough mass to just win the game outright or you just have enough lasers where no shields will be able to stay online long enough. Another push here in the south. The chickens are retreating. They shouldn't really be charging back and forth. They should just keep a line and then wait for the enemy to attack. Obviously, you want to make gains on the land side of things. These mechs still haven't been built yet. Just pointing that out a little frustrating. They were just in Team 2's territory, and they haven't been built yet. Or rebuilt yet, I should say. But uh, all of these, there's some shields not covering actual units. We have uh, a lot of Percy's. How many Percy's is this from Ayahuasca? 35. That's a decent chunk. And the chickens will actually turn around and face the Percy's. They'll face the music here. And uh, the uh, long arm of the law, as you would call it, from the uh, these Percy's will deal with a lot of hit points on this chicken. First chicken will probably fall. There are Othams. Oh, the chicken should have probably moved forward a little bit. The Percy's are going to try to get out of the way before the Iron Storm activates. The second chicken will just walk directly into it. Same with the third one. And a lot of the Iron Storm will affect Kaizuko's main forces here and reduce their effectiveness and survivability and all of that and the second one falls so two chickens worth not two chickens worth two chickens have fallen for team one and then the coisters come in to help take out a lot more of that uh, hit points the iron storm doing its number on nearby units oh, actually i don't think a lot of percy's even died to that iron storm and there's more and more coming all the time another wing or so of Corsairs come over the top. The lightning tanks are doing their jobs, taking out the Corsairs, preventing a second uh, flyby or bombing run, second bombing run. But, uh, yeah, I mean, for a bunch of Percy's, two chickens is probably worth it. Sorry about that. I clicked off screen because uh, I was trying to click on the resource. And 600, uh, 667,000 uh, mass here. That's actually a decent amount. I'd say about a third... 
of that is from the chickens, and then probably a quarter of that is from the Othams. Uh, maybe about a, a fifth or so, but still. I don't know if it was worth it. They do kill the third chicken, though, so that's definitely worth it. Taking out three chickens for the price of, uh, like, 30-something Percy's and some shields. Definitely worth that uh, trade there. We have something going on in the backfield, I would hope. The f oh, there's a Awasha going... Awasa uh, going... I always want to add an R in there somewhere. That is being built as we speak. Novak's still not really doing a whole lot. The... Oh, this is just so disappointing. You have the... Disruptor here. And this is the range. It can target everything. And the air grid is open. It's like there's no... Shields, no nothing. And it's not even targeting it. That's... Oh, that's frustrating because you can eliminate Team 1's air. And you still have other players that have air, but it's not to the degree that Carl has it. And so you could reduce Team 1's effectiveness in the air for now. Then use that advantage to maybe build up some bombers or build up just like a horde of Corsairs again. That kind of thing. But does Team 1 or Team 2's player of Mac not targeting the air grid if they missed opportunity? And the Novax has done some work taking out some mass fab farms. There are two more up here that he could go for. Maybe he's going for the air grid in the back, most likely. Nope, he's going for this uh, mass fabricator. That one's going to explode. Goes after the P-Gen. That one will explode. Takes out the shield reserves on that shield. Cause it to regen. Another shield is being built as we speak. And it looks like Ayahuasca notices and goes, Oh, I need to take care of that and uh, protect my mass fabs. And again, not really a whole lot of, like, game-ending uh, momentum going here for Team 1. They have one Experimental Bomber, and they have one Novax. Second one under construction. I heard bombs go off over here. There's a bunch of Strat Bombers taking out some Harbingers. That's overkill, I would say, for that. Not, uh, don't need to use that many Bombers. But to each their own. I hear chickens somewhere. Where are the chickens? I hear the guns. Well, I guess they're... There's maybe air cannons. Oh, no, they're over here. There's four chickens on the way. Missiles actually deal a decent amount to that one chicken. Drop it below 50%. And they're actually... they. Wow. That is very precise aiming from Mac. You know, congratulations to him. Takes out a chicken with two uh, bursts of missiles from these TMLs. That is just amazing good on him and then was able to take out the second second chicken we did a huge number on two of the four chickens and just using missiles and some corsairs that man they're getting their um mass efficiency on point here asf coming over the top to deal with the corsair is going to engage the asf there aren't really a lot of uh sams like really anywhere for team two and so these asf might be outnumbered more are coming in all the time here for Team 2. It's going to be close, but the chickens do make it around the line of really weird wall sections. And it uh, looks like Team 1 will still have air control for now, maybe? Nope, but another squadron come in to help assist, and I think that is going to be air control for Team 2, actually. The chickens are making their way to the Disruptor. Mac is on the retreat as we speak. The chickens are in range of the mass fabs. We'll take a lot of those out. That's going to hurt. The shields near this megalith will go down. The megalith will maybe finish. Uh, it's going to be close. But the chicken is going straight for that disruptor. Now it can. Tar it's in range of the disruptor. Target the disruptor. The second chicken is going for the main base of Ayahuasca. And the bomb drops on top of some mass, fa well, what was once mass fat forms. Take out the megawatt that was building. The chicken ignores the, what is, oh, okay, well, the oh, washer's gone. There's a fat boy here taking out the uh, chicken bot. The chicken will get the fat boy. Maybe. No. It's not even. It still isn't dead. Don't don't repeat the whole SMD for NASC, uh, SMD for, na for uh, the SMD uh, mistake where multiple times enemy units were near a SMD and they didn't go for it. 
But they're going for the air grid now. Strat Bomber's going over the top, dealing some sh damage to the shields, giving way for the chickens to just plow the road. And that disruptor is still not dead. It's not dead. That's amazing. The team team will still have their artillery online. They have a bunch of mass to pull through now. They'll probably build another one here really quick. We have some of these uh, broadswords going after the calm of ayahuasca, but he is well protected with the ASF. Chicken. No, the chicken. It's it's not dead yet. There's a, The megalith does finish and we'll deal with the chicken. Now it's going for this rear guard uh, air, air factory headquarters. Nullify max air. The megalith is trying to intercept and it will, but will it be fast enough? I don't think so. The engineers are trying to... I don't know what they're doing, but... Uh, yeah, it's not looking good for Mac. He just got dealt a serious blow. Keeps his artillery, though, but still. But at the same time, chickens push that uh, main base or main fire base here for Team 1. One chicken goes down. We'll deal a lot of damage nearby. There is some um, Utashala spammed up to deal with the rest of those. A lot of Rascoms go up in smoke there for BJ. That's, that's going to hurt. A lot of Ezekiel is going to get hit from that. Team 1 bombers over the top, not targeting the weaker chicken, definitely a mistake there. The chicken here for Carl will open up, take out the first one, and then take out the second one. That's really going to end one way. Another chicken en route to the front lines. I love the counter pushes here from Team 1 while Team 2 was distracted, but uh, I don't think it was as effective as Team 1's push, so definitely got to uh, you know, admire Team 1's tenacity at holding the front line relatively well. I don't see that yeah, they ping the comm, but uh, I don't know what they're going to do with that. Team 1, Team 2's Air Force from Lord Rata was just kind of just sitting there. But lots of SAMs being spammed up. I wonder what they're protecting. Well, they're protecting the gateway. There's also, of course, the Novax that's gone now. They get rid of it? What? What is going on? Like, that's not, that wasn't an explosion. That was definitely, it was there and now it's not. So that's kind of weird. Team 1 not going for any game enders. Not even Artie. And they're being hit by Artie as we speak. BJ building another quantum gateway. Looks like that is a uh, template of some sort. At least that's what it kind of looks like. Which is the death and destruction here on this game. We're at 49 minutes. If you've joined the cast, please like and comment down below what your favorite moment's been. The fact that this thing is still not dead <laughs> is ridiculous <laughs> please if you're watching this from either team the fact that this disruptor is still not destroyed when two chickens well one specifically but two chickens came into the main base did a huge number and didn't finish off the disruptor is shameful game but a large force out here with a bunch of chickens are on their way to the front line dealing with these fat boys most likely the fat boys are going to stray too close to the sun they're going to get burned for in this case incinerated with plasma let's get a nice screenshot nice little view of that gotta press the right key for that yeah the, looks like those are asf over the top of those chickens the chickens now okay don't re you have you have four chickens against two fat boys that the artillery fire is fine what do you what do you do? But that's uh, could have per like realistically team two doesn't really have a whole lot of defenses now you've wiped out a lot of them so that's kind of a waste there and now all that's going to give is team two the opportunity to rebuild and uh you know build more defensive lines ayahuasca going for a novax the artillery of course is still online and repping up as we speak just because it's cyber and that's what it does chickens being spammed up i hear chicken fire somewhere where is it Let's do the west. Two more chickens. Three more chickens on this western side. Honestly, if you're going to fight uh, chickens, just send your army to the west and deal with that. But look, the fat boys are even coming closer. So you could have just pushed and it would have been fine. But nope, they didn't decide to do that. A fifth chicken. Sorry, sixth ch chicken. There are so many chickens. They're building a shield. He's spamming up Artie. Is that what you're spamming up? That's what it looks like. The shield almost gets immediately taken out. That was quick. It's a fat boy. What do you expect? It, it deals with... The whole point is to shell the enemy position until they just burst into flames. Secondary shield gets built to help protect the first one. ASF's coming over the top to help assist in the defense of those chickens. There are six of them, of course. 
more being built. Is there some agreement beforehand where they don't build any game enders? Because uh, I don't, I don't see any Novak. One Novak is not a game ender, and they're now rebuilding it. So again, I don't know what happened to that first one. It's really weird. There's another Duke up there. The air grid here for Carl was mostly taken out. Looks like he's going to rebuild his uh, air grid here pretty soon. Now the disruptor is going for the T3 air factory of Kaizuko. And he's building his own already as we speak. So everyone's gone T3 air. Everybody has access to it. So good on Team 1. Team 2 should have followed suit. Yep. Well, again, Mac lost his. It's back now. Yeah, so all players have T3 air at 50 minutes or even probably 35, 40 minutes. You probably should have, especially if it's 3v3, sh you should all have access to T3 land, T3 air. If you're playing on the naval map or water map, T3 and Navy, at least to some degree. Even if you don't really use it and you're just producing, like, cruisers, at least have having access to it is better than not having access to it. The whole you would rather need it. You either have it, then need it, then need it, not have it kind of thing. But now the chickens are going to come forward. And they're going to push that front line heavily. And there is no fat boy that's going to get in their way. They're playing, the fat boys were playing a game of chicken, and the chickens finally decided to uh, say, okay, we'll take you up on that offer. And the megalith is not retreating now. And the chickens are now in range. That is not a good idea. They're going to target. They're going to focus down the, the megalith. Let's see if they focus it down. Maybe. Possibly. Look at all the dead just units and everything. That megalith does fall. The chickens here from Lord Rato are moving in to assist with the defensive measures of Team 2. The chickens... F what are you doing? You almost had... What are you, what are you doing? You're giving time for the chickens to come in and rescue Team 2. What are you doing, Kaizuko? You need... What? You have five chickens versus six chickens. You have also a Novax. All that's going to do is give Team 2 more time to build. You're spamming up Arty installations, which isn't a terrible idea, but uh, the chickens are now retreating. So, again, I don't know what's going on with that. The fat boy is still alive. It didn't even have a shield. That's just disappointing. Is the Arnie targeting the fat boy? Is that really what's happening right now? The Arnie, the... Oh, don't tell me this. Okay, I was like, if that hit, that'd be hilarious. Oh, 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 next shot's coming in. Next shot's coming in. Misses. Uh, you had the opportunity to go for the fat boy. You didn't take it, and therefore it didn't kill it. So that first Duke finishes. The second one's coming online. The Havatham is almost finished as well. I feel like I heard another one somewhere. A Al washer has almost completed. It's being built inside of the <laughs> little hill there. BJ is just spamming up Eco here. He is the lowest. Well, actually, Mac is the lowest. He dealt. He is still trying to recover after, you know, however five or ten minutes ago that was. Strap bombers over the top, not going for the fat boy, as you would think, but they're going up to Ayahuasca. And the bombs are dropping as we speak. The shields fall. It was not enough. There are some secondary parachutes coming in to assist. The strap bombers will fall. Will not get a second turn. Both the comms of Max and Ayahuasca are in Ayahuasca's main base. And, of course, Lord Rato is underneath shield coverage. It looks like that's where the shields are going for for Carl, I think. There was one targeting, again, the fat boy, but which was just insane. You're going to target a you know, unit. I mean, it's slow, but still, a Awasha is on your way. Okay, go go for the fat boy. That's just perfect. Perf not penance, but perfect uh, justice where the chickens were being hit, and now the fat boy can't fire back. The bomb will drop, impact the shield of the fat boy. Not even taken out all the way. The ASF are... Mm, nope, they don't respond. They felt like that was a trap and good on them for not falling for it. The experimental bomber will turn around once more. Go after... Oh, no. Oh, oh, it's going after the chickens here on the west. There are seven chickens. Seven chickens. Takes out some of that assisting army. At least the assisting units. The main army is the chickens. ASF protecting that uh, bomber with their lives. 
Another bomber drops. Take out the shields. One takes one out. Depletes the other shields. But the answer for spawns from Team 2 is just not occurring. So this experimental bomber just has free range to do whatever the heck it wants to. Fat Boy's not moving. Probably should be moving, but it's not. It'd be funny if an Artie actually targets the Fat Boy and kills it. That would be hilarious. Oh, 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 no. No, a little too to much to the east. The Megalith eats some plasma from that bomber. Still, you know, perfectly fine. Still a little under uh, 100,000 hit points. Not a huge inconvenience there. We have missiles being launched all the time. Oh, they're actually being launched from Ayahuasca's uh, comm. I'll build the Billy Nuke. That'd be hilarious now. Just, like, build the Billy Nuke and take out all of these forces. Missiles are on the way. Taking out uh, sniper bots. Taking out everything. The Artie is actually landing next to the Fat Boy. That must be kind of scary for that Fat Boy. He's like, move. Move me, please. Lands onto the shield. Oh, it lands over here. That's... Yeah, you're using Artie to take out a Fat Boy. Like that. Like T3 Artie at that. That's just using the wrong thing to target the wrong thing pretty much it's like a uh, I mean yeah a rectangle can fit in a square hole but you should just use a square for the square hole oh it's the fat boy's now moving like oh I gotta move yeah yeah you gotta move dude because that those arties are coming for you I don't know why there's so many like they could target the comb of ayahuasca and be perfectly fine but they're like we're gonna target the fat boy because it would be funny I'm like yeah it is funny but still <laughs> what is going on <laughs> why <laughs> Oh, it does take a hit. It drops into the yellow. They are starting to make some uh, work on that fat board. Okay, take the Novax. Target the fat board. Take the Novax. Target the fat board. Just please do it. Please, please do it. No. The Owl Washer comes here in the east. Takes out a bunch of those Ravagers. Starting to open up that eastern side for Team 1 to use as an avenue of attack. Don't really need it at this point. But uh, options are options at this point. Focus already, says Kai Zuko. Yeah, I mean, they're targeting fat boys, so I don't think they're really focusing already. It takes another hit. You can see the, the landing, uh, the little, uh, little, not indication, but the little blurb. But this eyewasher uh, should take it out. Direct impact, takes out the fat boy, and they'll be happy about that. Okay, now focus. Literally anything else, please. Infrastructure, comms, not, not movable targets. You know, Novax's target something eco literally anything else but fat boys okay, it looks like now they're targeting the comm of ayahuasca and the bomber is gonna look like it's gonna go straight for ayahuasca's comm once again shield impacts takes out some bomb it takes out some bombers takes out some ngs doesn't go for it retreats the chicken falls the crab falls there's still a couple more chickens here to the east. The ASF are given orders to go after the bomber. ASF are given orders to protect said bomber. Who will win? Well, the, the ASF are going to go after the bomber and die for their attempts. There is some AA on that uh, bomber. Not a lot. It's like the uh, missiles for the Tsar. It's not a lot, but it's something. Something's better than nothing. Well, it looks like the RD is starting to be too much for Team 2 to face. Looks like some of it's targeting the Disruptor that should have already been dead 10 minutes ago, but whatever. And the, RD, the counter already has taken out one of the Dukes with the assistance of the Novaks. Two more have been built here for Carl. That one over here has been built here for uh, Kai Zuko. And then I think I thought I saw another one being built somewhere else, but I guess maybe it was just... No, there's just those. Oh, there's another Novax down there. That's so three versus one at this point with the Novax assisting. Novax targeting shield emplacements and looks like it might be targeting the comm here pretty soon. The crab gets taken out by the Othams and then the crash damage takes out everything but one lightning tank. Ooh, that's got to hurt. The chickens have a, you know, clear line of... I was going to say sight, but clear line of movement. There's nothing in their way. The bomber's going straight from the... Artillery, it's going to impact the shield and do pretty much nothing, unfortunately. I'm going to watch it just impact, do absolutely nothing. There are some ASF. They're going to deal with some of those hit points. But, okay, go after the comm. Okay, that's perfect, perfect, in, you know, inline. Bomb does not drop. I thought it dropped, but it did not. 
And this bomber will... Okay, you gotta keep moving. Gotta... Nope. Nope. No. Uh, no, it's gonna get caught out. It's gonna... Oh, no, it might. Oh, it's hard, because, like, the ASF are getting closer and closer, but I think they're gonna get close enough. And there it goes. There went there went my favorite unit, my air unit in the game, and it uh it it died. But the artillery from Team One is broken. Most of the shielding around the disruptor, and that was Team Two's only shielding. The chickens have gone in around the back behind the other chickens here from Team One, but the chickens look like they're on a direct course with the calm of Ayahuasca. He's like Ravagers. Ravagers are the name of the game here. Novax is helping, assisting with taking out shields. Some of the air grid has been taken out for uh, Lord Rato. And Lord Rato has built his own Hubatham. So more already here for Team 1. We've reached, uh, sorry, Team 2. We've gone over the hour mark. So definitely a long game. Some of it could have, honestly, this game could have ended a little bit early had Team 1 just focused the RD and killed a lot more things with it. But uh, I think now they just want to end it. So... At least, no, better late than never. Shield and placement starting to fall around that disruptor. More and more rounds impacting the area as we speak. There's not that many engineers. Mac is sitting next to it. Uh, artillery shells landing. Not really the best idea to, you know, sit there, but uh, it's an idea. Uh, already landing all the time. Already trying to land onto Ayahuasca's com. Again, you should just retask that one onto the disruptor. Take out the stuff that can fire back at you first and then target everything else. It's like uh, when gunships target the AA and then go after everything else. Once the AA is gone, no one else is shooting back. So free damage, free real estate, uh, that uh, that meme. That's whenever I think free damage, that's what I think of, is that free real estate. But uh, there were some Percy's that made it in to the main base. They took out the Hubatham for Kazuko. Uh, Kaizuko, excuse me. So that sucks, but uh, didn't even... Didn't even see them, but there's even more on the way. This, they're just they're just like coasting on this eastern edge. Team two didn't even notice. Team one didn't even notice. The shields around Ayahuasca have fallen. Impacts onto the Novax takes out a decent amount of the hit points. Another round lands takes out a shield emplacement outright. Another one lands takes out another shield emplacement. Shields popping back online. That that Novax that Novax that disruptor is still online for Team two. And then Iowas is going, yeah, I'm going to run now. Down here would actually be better. There's more, I don't know. Well, they are Cybran, so not the best. But something, tele phase, tele says uh, Big Bang. Yeah, I mean, tele-defense, or tele-snipe could be an idea here for Mac. Uh, going after Carl, probably not the best idea. Uh, where is... No, there's Teledefense here. There's Teledefense pretty much everywhere, except for BJ. BJ, he has some... Oh, he has Rascom, so maybe that'd be enough. I don't think so, though. But uh, Mac does start the teleporter, so... The shields around the Hubatham have fallen. They're trying to be popped back on as fast as we can. We have more being spammed up. We have a lot of Uta Shalas to prevent any Telesnipes, but uh, Team 1's not going to do that. They don't have any Cybern players anymore. The shields around those dukes. The other duke has been rebuilt, so Team Two, Team One still has three. They've actually built a Hubatham, so that's four artillery for Carl. And of course, uh, Kaizuko is rebuilding his, so they'll have a fifth one online, starting to get critical mass of artillery installations for Team One. The chickens dealing with a bunch of these uh, engineers, and then I think these engineers can get Control K. I don't want to. Maybe it kinda, that's what it kind of looked like to want to give uh, veterancy to those chickens. But there's nothing to defend. There are some Ravagers, but there's not enough. There's so many chickens. There's six chickens here. There's another <laughs> Awasha coming in. Two more chickens back here. A crab. Oh, look at this. They're going to target the uh, the Ravagers. That's a, actually a good play there, taking out some PD. Okay, don't, don't uh, hover bomb because... You're just going to get hit by a bunch of ASF and uh, Sam. So, kind of surprised Haizuko, Hai Haizawa. Ah, uh, no, wow, I can't, I can't, uh, uh, Ayahuasca. There we go. Haizuko. That's uh, combining different names together. Apologies for that. 
Uh, but the chickens are moving in. The ravagers were depleted. A significant portion. But it doesn't really matter. Even though the ravagers were there, the chickens have enough hit points and movement where they'll reach uh, Ayahuasca. And so he's just got to run now. Strap bomber's coming over the top. Experimental bomber coming in over top as well. The bomb does not go off. It's going after the P gens. Not really could go after the comm. But the comm of Ayahuasca will be taken out. And this will be dropped to a 3v2 in Team 1's favor. And then the artillery shows just land, take out any other hopes of maybe he'd get out of there unscathed. And now the disruptor is going to be the main target here for Team 1. They've. Oh no, the hover thing is still alive, so that's another target. And surprise, no one went. Uh, there's an emissary being built, but no one went for like Paragon or YOLO or Maver or any of that stuff. They just went for artillery, kind of late in the game, honestly. And uh, now this Novax will feel the wrath of some chickens. This is the chicken game to win or lose. It's just a bunch of chickens versus another bunch of chickens. It's, I mean, no. And Mac gets taken out by Carl. Mac tried to go after the Dukes, but there was too much tele-defense, and that will drop this game to a 3v1. Lord Rata will inherit everything, but decides to leave and say, nope, I am out of here. And that will be a win for the Northeastern team of Team 1. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate the eyeballs. Uh, please like and comment down below. If you haven't hit that little sub button, the little red button, please go click it. I greatly appreciate it. And again, thank you so much for your time making it to the end of the video. I know, you know, sometimes it's hard to watch a video for an hour plus while you, you know, you might be doing other stuff or sometimes I have it on the background while I'm working or whatever. But again, I do appreciate watching to the end of the video. Thank you so very much. And I'll see all of you and you and you and you and you and especially you right there, especially you. I'll see everyone in the next one.